Well, today on Nation, we are talking about how to sell jobs in an economy like this. So if you're a small business owner or you sell any type of service, go ahead and stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from Window Cleaning Resource, windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What is up? Hey, thanks for having a look around. Uh, if it's your first time here, you're listening or watching, this is available anywhere song um, podcasts are or on YouTube, thanks for checking us out. Hopefully you dig it. Hopefully you binge all the content during this slower period. Go back and watch. We have 140 plus episodes, 145 plus episodes, and it's been going on for 145 plus weeks. Go back, binge all the content you want. If it's not your first time here and you are an OG, if you are one of the cool kids, one of the nation, you watch every episode, give me the thumbs up. And of course, buy your supplies through me, shameless plug, <laughs> then what's up? It is because of you that I get to buy name brand ramen during all of this. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, no, I do de definitely appreciate, especially this time. Uh, you guys that are buying through me, it uh, really does mean a lot. We've, we've slowed down just like everybody, so uh, the ones who are still buying and making sure that I get to put it in for you means the world, so thank you. If you want to buy through me, 862-312-2026. That's 862-312-2026. So I hope, first and foremost, that everybody out there is hanging in there I hope you've taken advantage of all the SBA stuff that's going on, the Disaster Relief, the CARE Act, all that stuff. Hopefully you guys have looked into it. If you haven't, search anything into small business relief, uh, disaster relief, and COVID-19 relief, and you'll see all the different things. There's some documents. Do your research, but there are forgivable loans going on right now for small businesses. Uh, there is a lot of benefits out there to help you pay payroll. Keep afloat and also the availability for lines of credit uh, to help you with supply costs upwards of a million dollars if need be. Uh, so definitely check that out. Um, I don't know anything about how they're doing it at the end and I'm not smart enough to know any of the payback stuff, but there are some options taking that $10,000 advance. You're actually going to have that forgiven. So some pretty cool stuff for especially a lot of you who are larger um, that have multiple employees trying to keep people happy. It is just a very, very rough time. Um, <clears throat> employment, unemployment, if you haven't seen, has gone from like, you know, 3,000 to 300,000. Uh, I don't remember. I think that's just in North Carolina um, in one week, one week's time. So it's crazy. It's really, really crazy. But uh, anyway. On a positive note, I hope you guys are killing it, or at least you're making it through. You're doing some business stuff. Remember, work eight hours a day, even if you don't have eight hours of work. Um, better your business. So you're here. You're watching. You're listening. Whatever you're doing, um, yeah, you're bettering your business. So high five to you. Uh, but today we're going to talk about selling jobs right now, like selling jobs, um, doing bids, estimates, whatever you call them. But right now, things are a little bit different right now, obviously, than they normally are. So we have to kind of tiptoe. We're stepping on eggshells in the way that we do things. And let me just preface all of this by saying, I've talked a lot about my seven-day ring guarantee that I've had. Uh, I know a lot of you have started implementing that that maybe didn't in the past. And I'm going to touch on that right now, let you know what it is, and then explain why I know it's not anything different than normal. But what I always did was a seven day rain guarantee. And if within seven days it rains and the rain dirties your windows, you call me back and I'll make them touch those windows up, make them look perfect again for you. That's how I word it. Now, have I ever been called back in the umpteen years? And the answer is one time some lady thought that she could call me, I would show up and I would just clean her whole house again. I got there and the windows were clean. I'm like, no, there's no... There's nothing here for me to detail. They're still clean. Oh, I thought you just... No, she was trying to scam me. Once. In all the years I've done that. So everything else people go, well, if nobody's ever called you, why do you do it? And the reason is, is because people buy it based on comfort on one side and fear on the other side. Those are the two buying factors. They have to be comfortable. They can't be fearful. So 
wherever you you are on that, it's like a, a, a gauge. You're either one or the other or in the middle, right? And we need people to be comfortable. And here's the thing with rain. If people say, oh man, it's going to rain tomorrow. I don't want to get all my windows clean and then they're going to get dirty because, you know, rain dirties windows, which it doesn't. But people assume that because they see spots after rain because of the dirt is generally, you know, anyway. Uh, so I have a seven day rain guarantee because it puts people at ease. Now there's nothing worse. Well, before this all happened, there was nothing worse than having a schedule that uh, you needed to reschedule or something like that all because of rain. That drove me crazy because it messes everything up. So to put somebody, make them comfortable. Oh, I'm calling because it's going to rain and I want to reschedule. Oh, hey, uh, I understand your fear, but we have a seven day rain guarantee so you can be comfortable. It instantly takes that away. Well, within seven days, yeah, maybe it was going to rain in seven days. Well, at least they got me covered, right? It's a warranty on a product that doesn't go bad, right? It's the same thing where people, if they're comfortable, they buy. And that's where this whole thing is going on. Now, I'm not telling you to go out there and work if your state says you can't work. Or even if for your views and opinions on this whole thing, you think it's best to stay home. Then do what you think. I'm not telling you either way. But if you are still buying and people are still calling and you're still answering your phone, this is all going to come up. So what we need to do is take people who are in a big state of uncertainty that's what all this is. That's why the economy is doing what it is. That's why your business is where it's at. All of that is just complete uncertainty. It's not the, you know, couple thousand people that have died that have done that. It is the uncertainty because they don't know where everything is going. They don't know when this is all going to be done. When are we going back to normal? When can I go to a movie again? The uncertainty is why markets crash. The uncertainty is why people pull their money out of markets. The uncertainty is why they lock everything up and they go, well, I'm not spending any money because they don't know when this is going to stop, right? So what we can do in our services alone is to basically allow them to be comfortable. And that's what the seven-day rain guarantee does in the olden days before this all happened. And that's what we can do now is all we're doing is trying to make people comfortable. Because even if they do call you, even if they're trying to do anything, they're still uncomfortable. Like, ah, I don't know. Nobody's just like, well, I'm just going to call the window. Like, they are still uncomfortable with the situation. Your biggest job is to make them comfortable. A comfortable person makes a sale. That's how that happens. They called you for a reason. They want it. You know you're the best option. You know you're the best company out there, right? It's a perfect fit. They just have to be comfortable enough to go, you know what? You're right. This is a great option. Let's do it. So here's a few ways to go about that. And I want to start the whole list off by saying, please don't do th Comment down below if you are doing this and you think I'm just a stupid, you know, whatever. Comment down below, but do not sell on fear. I, nothing dry. I had a guy on chat who came in and he said, I need something to put in my water so I can sterilize windows. I said, yeah, I don't know anything like that. And he went on this big spiel about how it's such a great idea and he can upcharge his customers to do that. And I said, well, I think it's a horrible idea that you're exploiting this. You're exploiting people's fears to make money. And of course, you know, that opened the door up to the tirade because you're not supposed to say what you think and all that. But here's the thing. If you are adding it as a benefit, like, hey, we're cleaning this. You know, we do house washing. We're using SH, which has been shown to minimize, you know, germs and that type of thing. As it's an added, that's what you're going to be saying anyway. You're not playing on people's fears. But if you are jumping out going, we are the coronavirus elimination team. And you put out that and you have these big people. By the way, every time I see that, they put this big biohazard like thing on it. And warnings and all this stuff. And if you're playing on somebody's fear that hard in a time like this, I think you're doing it wrong. I think you need to definitely check yourself because even after all this, you're still going to be a company. This is going to go away in a few weeks. And people, are, like a year from now, people are like, oh, I remember that. Oh, yeah. That sucked. That's what they're going to remember. But if you're playing on people's fears, like, that's not fair. That's not fair to them. So don't play on their fears, but make them feel comfortable. Um, I just saw another ad today, by the way. And it was uh, this big thing. And it said, this rig kills germs. All right. I guess. You know, what's going to happen is because none of your claims technically in your solution, your mixes have been um, proven by the whatever agency. Like, I hope none, nobody's getting in trouble for claiming all that stuff.
But anyway, don't play in the fear. Uh, that's fear-mongering, man. Don't do that. But what you can do is subdue their fears. All right. If somebody's calling you, remember those things I was talking about before, that they're worried, and even if they don't sound like it, they still have that in the back of the brain. Like, here's a few things that they're thinking is, is what if my neighbors, what are they going to say? Right? I got people at my house. Um, what if, you know, should I even do this? You know, we were supposed to be on a boat. We're in a boat club, have, you know, access to all these boats. And we had one reserved for the weekend. And you're out on a boat in the middle of a lake. Nobody's around. You're social distancing. But we thought, man, I don't know if that's such a great idea. Is it still opening us up? Like, we were just so uncertain we ended up canceling the boat. You know, and that was basically on my wife's concerns. She was just not comfortable with the option of going on the boat. So... We made the decision to cancel the boat. Now, if that's the same thing that's happening when people are canceling your service, people just aren't sure. So our job is just to make them comfortable. And it's to subdue those fears. We're not taking them away. We're not telling them you will have no fears. You know, we're not telling you 100% guarantee you're not going to. We're not lying and we're not exaggerating. But what we are doing is letting them know the things that we're doing to take steps for making them feel comfortable. Making them feel like everything is being kind of handled the way it is. Nobody gives two dumps about your COVID response letter. Don't send an email out. Don't. Don't. Don't send an email out. No one cares. Has anybody got these yet? These like emails that say, uh, Best Buy. Or I got one from Intuit Software. Our policy on COVID. No one cares. Not only did you, you maybe read part of the first one, maybe the second one. But after like 20 of them, I don't care. I don't care what QuickBooks or Intuit software is doing about COVID. I don't care. They're, they're zero, zero. They're a software company. It doesn't affect me. It doesn't affect anything. I just can't hear about everybody's options because it just, at that point, you're just making noise and no one's going to listen. So we're not doing that. That doesn't calm anybody's fears. But when somebody calls... Being that they need to be comfortable, you need to explain your process then. And even if they don't see fears, they still think you're going to just explain it to them. And don't make it sound like a big deal, but just say, hey, maybe you come in as the no contact company. Maybe that's your new USP through all this. Maybe that's your advertising. If you're trying to do some free advertising, trying to get the note out, maybe in a week or two, you're even sending out flyers or postcards to see if you can drum anything up. We're the no contact company. What a no contact company means in my head is we do the bid over the phone. When you sign up, we show up. We'll knock on the door, say hi to you through the door, let you know that we're there. Or we'll call you when we're on the job site. And then we go ahead and do the work. Maybe I Skype you or FaceTime you when I'm done to go around the house with you because that's a real big thing. House washing, I always like to do, is show everybody something. I'll go through. Maybe take a few pictures of different sides and send them to them. And then after everything's done, say, we are not currently not accepting cash or checks right now, only credit card. Now, a lot of you are like, oh, there's credit card fees. Yeah, but you're getting work. Like you're calming people down on the COVID thing. If you're not happy about those fees, then don't work. Like now's not the time for you to piddle over 3%, right? So after all that's done, I can book the job or I could bid the job, book the job, do the job and get paid for the job. And I'm going to send them a thank you letter at the end. Hey, I really appreciate everything. Make sure to tell your friends, you know, we're a small business, blah, 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 blah. I could do all that and never once have any contact. So right there, it takes the worry away. Hey, you know what? This whole thing, now these texts are going to be here. Right uh, now, I got these guys. They're all over. They're at other people's houses. Maybe they're trans. They're bringing it here, and now I'm going to be talking to them. And they're going to be breathing on me, or they're going to, you know, I want to come in, and then I got to pay them with a check, and then they got to touch. And the listen, all those fears of contact gone because you're the no contact company. That might be a good push for right now that you're a no contact company. Now this is changing everything, and our USPs are changing. But this is, again, a temporary situation we're trying to best. We're trying to, you know, find a way to do that. Now, that does not mean 
that any of this stuff is going to be easy. And it doesn't mean that people are actually going to go with you. It just doesn't. People are still uncertain. There's a lot of people who aren't even going to call you. Just for what I do, I am following up with people who were um, having purchase questions and things. And, okay, well, let me look at it. Well, so cool. I'll call, I'll call you back in a couple days. Call them back in a couple days, shoot them a text. Hey, just catching up, seeing what you thought. Any new questions? No, we're not doing anything right now. This COVID stuff, we got to wait till it's done. I mean, this is the, the span of a couple days, a week. And people have gone from, I'm super interested, let's do this, to no, I'm not doing anything. Right? So the same thing happens where a mindset can change. A mindset can change. If somebody's still uncertain about where they're going to get their money from. Well, that's another, that's another you, you can't argue that. You know, if somebody went from making X amount per week and now they're making unemployment, well, maybe they need to cut some things. But a lot of our customers still are in that middle upper class where they have expendable disposable income. They want to help the small business. They kind of want to do all that. So there still is stuff out there. It's few and far between. Uh, just like what we do, like sales being dropped down. A lot of people just aren't needing our help right now. We're trying to just be more proactive, trying to get out there, trying to keep the positivity up. Maybe that's what you should be doing. But you're still dragging a, a hook on the bottom of the uh, ocean to find something. You're still trolling. You know, you have to kind of go through a lot to scrape the barrel. But the possibilities are still there. Definitely. Uh, the one other thing on this is that people want to do their part, right? So a lot of times, uh, and this is part of where my wife's concern was, is she didn't want to go on to the boat, get something, and then end up passing it off to a bunch of people even if we didn't get it, right? So people are all, and surprisingly, there's no riots and people going crazy and there's, you know, some dumb uh, college kids that are partying, you know, but for the most part, people are like, hey, you know what? It's best for everybody if I sit at home right now. It's best for everybody if I have no contact. You know, they want to do their part, not just what we need to do. They're thinking of their part. Like, what are my neighbors going to think? You know, am I helping the situation or hurting the situation? There's people who are sitting in their house going grocery shopping as little as possible, maybe even shopping online, just not leaving their house. That's people doing their part. So if you can help people learn to do their part or let them know that you're doing, that they are doing their part by hiring you, that's again, making them more comfortable. There's a lot of underlying things that they may be thinking about and that all falls in. Once they realize they're doing their part by hiring a no contact company, they can still have their windows cleaned. They can still get the house washed. We're not doing inside right now, but we can as soon as all this passes, uh, but we can do your outside, we can do your house wash, we can do your gutters, we can get all those services done, concrete. We can do all that still as a no contact company. People are now in their house more than they've ever been before. Ever. In history. Because this has never happened before. So what do they do when they're sitting there going, oh man, these windows are jacked up. Right? They're looking out of their windows. They're maybe not seeing the outside of their house right now. But they're looking through the windows. Maybe it is a time where you can connect with some people. Maybe if you're connecting with content, you're allowing people to go, you know what? Yeah, I think I should do something. It doesn't have to be scary. It doesn't have to be COVID. But letting them know, you know, hey, spring is here. The pollen is finally down. Good thing we're going to miss it with all this home quarantine or something. You know, you could play the positives, kind of a little humor, making sure to go there. And then every time, let them know you're a no-contact company. Right? Subduing their fears pulls them back over to comfortable. Comfortable makes sales and gets people to uh, book jobs. And that's, that's the big thing is that that's all we're doing is trying to make people comfortable. Another thing to do is to make sure that we're letting them know our PPE. And it's, again, to make them comfortable. Um, even if you're no contact, you need to wear masks and gloves and booties, whatever the PPE that you have. No, I don't necessarily think so. But now we're doing our part and people can be comfortable. If I'm cleaning the outside of your windows and I'm cleaning with rubber gloves on, and they're blue surgical gloves. You can see them from a mile away. Well, guess what? I'm now putting you at ease because I'm doing more than you would think to take care of the problem. Be super comfortable. I got gloves on. I'm definitely not going to contaminate anything here. 
you know? Is it all image? Yes, it could. It, it is helping, you know, to some degree. Obviously, you, hand contact is a big one. But the big thing is, is not even that it's helping as much as it's calming. And calming, again, is the reason that the president is doing uh, meetings and um, live talks every single day. It's just to keep people calm. Hey, here's what's going on, right? I Don't worry about it. I'm wearing my, my respirator, my mask. I'm wearing these blue gloves. I'm even wearing booties, so I don't, I don't know, whatever. Anything that you do that's above and beyond, that's making a spectacle, is again, putting people, they're, you're making them comfortable. You're not putting a, a, a blanket over their face, right? Because this is helping, but it's making them comfortable. You're letting them know that I'm going above and beyond even with my PPE, personal protective equipment, by the way. Well, I didn't know that. There's a big thing. If you're using like those masks or regular dust masks or something, the the... It doesn't stop you from being able to breathe it in, but it stops your breathing out going. So, but do your research on that. But again, just doing stuff like that, I know it seems crazy right now. It puts people at ease. And again, if the neighbors are looking out their window, because they don't have contacts, so they're not really talking to their neighbors, and they see you like, oh, look, Doris is getting her windows cleaned. And that guy's got a respirator on and gloves. And, oh, wow. Now they're like, well, our windows are pretty dirty. We should get them done too. Like you're selling now based on that, showing people. You don't even have to put it, again, you're not blowing it up. You're not over-exaggerating. You're just wearing it and people are observing it, right? It is is huge to just make people comfortable. I can't stress that side of it enough, really. Uh, another thing is to explain to people state laws on cleaning and things like that if they if they call and not being a know-it-all and not putting it in their face. But when people are asking, oh, hey, I'm just calling to see if you guys maybe you're still cleaning. Oh, absolutely. Uh, the state of Maryland is stating that, you know, any contract you're doing, any type of dwelling, uh, uh, residential or commercial uh, maintenance or cleaning is complete, like, Putting that out there and what they're saying, every state is different, so check. Some states are actually going with the same definitions of essential and everything. But explaining that allows people to go, oh, oh, well, the state says that, or that's the decree, or, you know, oh, the executive order actually states, or uh, the uh, FEMA's definition of an essential business is, right? Throwing those out there, not to be a know-it-all. And not to force people into anything. Just explaining, hey, yeah, they've deemed us essential. We're totally cool. And all the other stuff we talked about. Knowing your state laws, knowing your state decree. Every time that they go and they do that, you know, the governor puts out their stay in place or whatever. They're going to list definitions in that of who can stay and who can play. Or whatever. Who can clean. So you're going to know the definitions. It's up to you to kind of go. And a lot of the definitions are very loose. So again, the big debate is, do we clean or do we not clean? Is it good that we're cleaning? Should we be staying home? But what if we're doing our part? You know, there's a big thing. I personally, I don't think, if, if you're doing it safely, I don't think it's a problem for you to go out there and clean. Make money, live, like do what you need to do. Now, the other debate is, are we really essential? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you think. It doesn't matter what I think. What matters is, is the definition provided by the state or by the federal government of essential. And uh, almost every state except Washington, maybe. Washington, um, one of the contractors contacted the uh, uh, Surgeon General and they replied with a definition saying you're not essential. But everywhere else, it's a pretty gray area. They're saying that if you're doing any type of dwelling, maintenance, or upkeep, okay? That means maids, janitors, window cleaners, pressure washers, gutter cleaners, roof cleaners, all those people are doing exactly that. So check with your local state on that, but know that. Maybe have this excerpts from there so you can tell people, again, let them know that you know what you're doing and you're not just some bucket bob like hurting for money like, yeah, no, 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 we're fine, I swear. We're, we're, we can, yeah, yeah, it's fine. You know, if you say it like that, obviously people then uh, know that you don't know what you're talking about. But again, putting knowledge is comfort a lot of times. 
you know? If you see, oh my god, there's a snake, oh, there's a snake right there, and you go, well, actually, that's a, you know, that is a standard uh, Midwestern gardener snake, you know, it's non-venomous, and it's very kind, you can pick them up, they're fine. People go, oh, no, oh, they're still ugly, but they calm down. Knowledge is comfort. That's what we're doing. Knowledge is comfort. Um, another side of them um, that I think is almost the biggest side of this whole thing, on top of making somebody comfortable, comfort, comfortable, wow, it's that day, I guess, uh, but it, it's, it's um, letting them know you're a small business. A lot of times, and I'm not talking about the franchises in our industry because we know who they are, but other people don't. If fish showed up to your house, you probably don't know their franchise. Maybe you think they are. I've had people in my company go, oh, wow, so this is a franchise that you... No, no. Oh, really? I thought this was a franchise. No, it's not. Oh, wow, okay. Well, your marketing is on spot. Perfect, thank you. That's good. But for the most part, they don't know, they don't ask, and they don't assume. Like, if you went to a grocery store, and you knew there was a few of them, are they franchise or family-owned? You know, like you don't really know and you're not really asking, but what I would do is bring it up to them. I'd say, Hey, uh, just, you know, I'm really appreciative. As you know, we're a small business. This is our livelihood and you've really made a difference. You know, saying something like that in the close, uh, saying something like that when they're asking if you're open or if you can clean, or I don't know if I want to get it done or any, letting them know that not only do people really, truly just want to help. People really want to hashtag save small business. That's very, very popular. They just really want to make sure everybody's okay in all this. They know that small business is hurting. I've heard of stories of people who somebody gets a $500 check in the mail from a customer. And they call them up and go, uh, I think I got this on air. You didn't owe us. No, no, no. Just take that money. I know you need it now. When all this is done, then we'll do some service. Like they are wanting to help and letting them know that not only does it secure you know, their comfort level, that they know they're doing something awesome for you. They know they're helping somebody. They know that they're appreciated. And they know that on top of everything else and the scare that's going on is you're just trying to make it. That goes big. And it makes people feel really, really good. Really, really good. I'll tell you, we have a restaurant here. It is not a franchise, one location. And there's a lady there that is the nicest lady you'll ever meet. We've literally gone there during this a curbside pickup just to make sure that she still has money coming in. Like, just to make sure we're helping her in some way. Like, that's where all this is going. I could eat any food I have here or any other restaurant that's way closer or way easier or a regular drive through or whatever. But instead, I went there because I want to make sure that she's taken care of. I want to make sure that she's doing okay and at least making something. I want to do my part to help her. That's the big thing on this. That's what we're seeing. I mean, our customers, you know that you got great customers. These customers are making sure that they are helping. They're leaving big tips. They're giving us, you know, food and soda and just trying to like, hey, you know what? We're behind you, that kind of thing. That means a lot. If you played this up until this point, if you've been listening to any of our shows and you've separated yourself from your company, right? You're showing people yourself, so they're hiring you, not just a faceless company name. Then they want to make sure they can help you. They want to make sure, oh man, your text. I don't meet people in face, uh, face to face when I have my company. It was always my operations officer. I worked in the office. I never left. Well, you know what I mean. Never left. I did all my bids on the phone, and they talked to him. But they loved him. They loved him. I literally was on jobs before where the guy walked out. We had a, the flu was rampant, regular flu years ago and uh, half the staff was gone i had to actually go out and clean with and i was paired with him uh we had a bunch of reschedules it just it was awful but i was out cleaning and the guy walked up to me he goes oh hey you guys did such a great job oh and he goes to hand me the check he goes uh i said oh i could take that he goes no let me i'm actually gonna give this to gary if that's okay and he walked over and gave it to the guy that works for me <laughs> i was like oh absolutely no problem uh, he's right around the back of the building like that's that means that they like him. They're going to like our company if they like him. That's the point of things. I'm never going to be like, well, I'm the owner of the... That's it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. If you are faceless, then they don't care. 
You don't care. Think about like the big franchise restaurant in your area. Okay. I don't know if they're open or closed. I don't care. Like they'll make it. Applebee's. They'll make it. They'll be fine, I imagine. Right? Unless you know somebody who works there or runs it or manages it or anything, then you'll go there. If you don't, and you don't really like their food all that much, it's not something to write home about, you may not even go there. So let them know that they're helping you. Let them know it's really making a difference and that you're super appreciative. And that could be some of the content you're putting out anyway. You should be constantly putting out content because people are at home, that's all they're doing is on Facebook and looking at everything else. You put out content, not pushing sales, just content, right? Now oh, we're still cleaning. Here's a nice house, blah, blah, blah. Or some pictures of people like, you know, in their, in their garbs and whatever. Put that content out. Let them know that you are a small business. Put their fears to bed and they will buy. Now, not in the same thing. So you don't need to, if you want to write me angry stuff, you certainly can. Thumbs down the video. If you hate me, that's cool. But I'm not saying it's going to be easy, but I'm saying it's possible. So stay, stay out there uh, or stay home, depending on what you think is best. Be safe either way and be healthy. Uh, and yeah, I mean, good luck. Good luck to everybody. You guys are like, you know, on the front line. So I definitely, uh, I definitely uh, am behind you. But that all being said, if you do need any supplies, big or small, let me know any order. Like you guys know, the only way I make money is by putting orders in. It's the only way I make money. So when you guys let me put an order in, that's how I make my, my cheddar. It costs you nothing extra. You put it in online or you put it in on through me doesn't cost you any extra. You actually save money by putting it in through me if you tell me the code for this week. But uh, I get credit and that's how I can pay my bills. So I really do appreciate it. Remember, I'm a small business. See if that works. But uh, no, I really do truly appreciate it. Um, uh, this week's code is no fear. No fear. You tell me. Jersey, everything's in my cart. No fear. I will give you 5% off and get that shipped out to you for free. Big or small, it doesn't really matter. Uh, I just want to put in all the orders for you. I possibly can. That's what I do. You never, ever are bothering me. Please let me know. 862-312-2026 is my number. Um, give me a call. Shoot me a text. Text me. I take texts all day, all night. If you're out shopping uh, on the site at night, text me whenever it's ready and I can get it in as soon as I'm in front of a computer. And it really does genuinely mean a lot. So hang in there, guys and gals. And until next week, try all you can to be epic.